Why, hello there again, everyone. I have returned with your daily dose of Outriders news and updates. And today we've got a bunch of things going on around Outriders. We're going to be talking about some new comments from People Can Fly in this article right here. It says Outrider Studio CEO discusses Project Gemini, Project Dagger, and E3. 2021 now of course people can fly the dev team behind outriders they are working on two brand new triple a projects but also there's some interesting stuff here because it looks like new stuff is coming up here in the very near future some new quotes there that we'll go over plus we're going to be talking about that in game some new ideas from the community and much more hey everyone what's happening open world games here hope you're doing good and let's dive into the latest around outriders shall we first of all starting out with this interesting article here from game rant let's get into the new quote here from uh people can fly uh, now they go on to say this they discuss project dagger and of course project gemini one of them is going to be an action adventure game this is what they had to say here it says project dagger is being led by people can fly new york with assistance from other no uh, north american studios while project gemini is being led by the warsaw studio with assistance from other european studios it's like a total of seven studios guys uh it says in terms of genre project D uh dagger excuse me is an actual action game but wajowski didn't elaborate on what gemini is with experience on classic shooter games like bulletstorm and of course the buzz around the recently released outriders it stands to reason that many are excited to see what comes next when asked what wajowski would say to fans in this regard he said the following he goes on to say Definitely, I would like them to look forward to some new stuff that we are currently working on. And without spoiling anything, there will be more to come in the near future. Look forward to what we are cooking up at People Can Fly. So they are currently working on a bunch of new stuff. But what does near future mean? The article goes on to say this. Near future caught our eye. So we followed up asking if he had anything to say regarding E3 2021. He simply replied, for now, we have nothing specific to announce around E3. As such, it's not certain if people can fly, we'll have anything ready in time. Though it's worth noting, Square Enix and Take-Two Interactive will be both at E3. And that's so significant because, of course, they are uh, Square Enix is the publisher of Outrider. So I would assume they would be showcasing something, but Take-Two Interactive will be there. And, of course, uh, you know, the Outriders dev team, people can fly are also working on a big AAA project for Take Two. So I'm crossing my fingers that we do get some sort of tease regarding what they are working on because I am honestly extremely curious uh, as to what they are working on. Because for me personally, I have really enjoyed uh, what they have created so far. But we'll see what happens uh, with that one. Now, a lot of you guys are currently in the end game for Outriders, of course, and there are some complaints. So let's talk about that one and some feedback. Plus, I have an interesting article here from Forbes, which tells you basically how you can really enjoy the end game and those expeditions. Let's get into this. So this one comes from Brutus. Uh, 0770 says in-game farm is poorly designed and driving people out of the game it says yes i know there are tons of bugs issues driving the people out of the game but this is one is unfortunately by design what is the point of the in-game farm in looter shooter to optimize build however if the rng is set up in the way you can farm for hundreds of hours without the progress of most of people uh will simply give up before all the uh smart uh beat i'll just bleep it out myself uh, we'll come here with, uh, you play the wrong game, that's how Looter Shooters works. Well, no. Well-designed Looter Shooters has RNG part where you can get lucky and the pity party where you are awarded by time and effort. Uh, and uh, pity part, excuse me, and the pity part, I don't know what that, sorry, it says, now second part is completely missing from Outriders. Now it says this, it is dumb as it would be really easy to implement, just add shop where you can buy any legendary for XSX exhibition resources so people can fill the progress. Yeah, that's the one thing that a lot of people want is the rotating shop with Diego. Now it says, by the way, I have more than 300 hours played, have three classes at CT15, and if I would not use, abuse, Noah glitch, I would have not have a single working legendary set. And even with this, I still do not have a single full set. Yeah, that... That is ridiculous as well. I think there needs to be adjustments with the actual uh, RNG system. We have a reply here from P. 
Pizza Borg, who says this, uh, yeah, it's a really weird system to make legendaries a core part of the progression system, but then give no way to actually target your farming. Yeah, I've seen topics about this right here. Being able to target farming, you know, go after specific gear and legendaries, that's really tough in Outriders. Now, it says about the only reliable place to get them is Gold Challenge Tier 15, but if you haven't already got those Tier 3 mods, it's going to be real sweaty to reliably get those golds, making the whole loop broken. It's one thing for low drop rates on legendaries if they are just a nice uh, to have or novelty item as they are in other games, but there's no excuse here. If you're going to do this uh, this way, uh, the legendary drop rate needs a significant increase across the board, especially given they're telling us this isn't a live service. You shouldn't be spending hundreds of hours grinding for one item if it's not a live service game. So yeah. Uh, a lot of uh, adjustments, I think, need to happen. Of course, officially, what we do know from People Can Fly is that they are working on rebalancing stuff with the game in terms of gameplay, perhaps the loot system. We shall see. But I do recall Anthem had a similar problem with its loot system. People were just not getting cool items. And the reason Anthem had that problem, though, is because simply there weren't cool items in the game. Like that's, But there are actually cool items in Outriders. That's the difference right there. All right, so let's talk about this one. This one comes from uh, Forbes, and it talks about how you can actually really enjoy the end game and really take advantage of something here. So let's take a look. It says, after 150 hours, I found Outrider's legendary farming sweet spot. Uh, and he goes on to say this right here. Uh, it's taken way too long. I have close to 150 hours into Outriders, I'm guessing, and I have only just reached this point with two out of my four characters. It's a place with a decent player population, generally competent teams, well, relatively fast runs and less than awful drop rates. Welcome to Challenge Tier 14 Expeditions. Why Challenge Tier 14? I'll explain. So this is really interesting how you can capitalize on playing Challenge Tier 14 instead of always going after Challenge Tier 15. Now it says this, Challenge Tier 14 will have a level 49 enemies. And if you've at least unlocked Challenge Tier 15, you have access to level 50 gear through upgrades or vendors. So you are both overleveled by one, and enemies have less health, do less damage at baseline, making runs easier. So this is something you could really take advantage of if you are at, uh, you know, challenge tier 15, or at least have unlocked that. Now it says loot-wise, challenge tier 15 just isn't worth it in most instances. Upgrading a drop from challenge tier 14 from uh, 49 to 50 is not that big of a deal. And while the drop rate is higher, it's not that much higher. A gold tier challenge tier 14 run gets you four times chest with a 20% legendary chance. A gold challenge tier 15 run gets you four times chest with a 25% legendary chance better. But because of the increase in difficulty, you will probably hit gold less often. So you can take advantage of this now. Honestly, since this has actually been brought up, I would be surprised if they buffed Challenge Tier 15 down the road. That's what they should do to fix this issue. Now it says, after just a few days of farming Challenge Tier 14, uh, where legendaries have finally started to drop with some consistency, I've gotten a ton of guns I've been after and am finally able to start putting together actual armor sets, though the loot pool is so massive, finding ex exact drops remains frustrating. And that's one of the problems people are having is being able to target farm I'm seeing. So yeah, once you're in the end game, it's tough to target farm. Now it says, it is, however, much better than the rest of the game, where again, I played through the campaign on four different characters and never got a single legendary drop that wasn't a quest reward, not ever. You know what? Me too. That was the same thing with me. You know, I have not played the game with any glitches, nothing like that. I just wanted to play it uh, as a pure experience to see how it actually uh, was made here, you know. Uh, and uh, I am the same way. I got my legendaries way later on in the campaign at like level 18 through those quest rewards. They start dropping only through quest rewards. So yeah, they need target farming. They need to adjust some things with the game. Hopefully they learn from all of this and they can make the adjustments with this game. And of course, going forward with perhaps uh, their expansion packs, DLC, and most notably Outriders 2. Now here's a really cool idea about the appreciation package, which is gonna be coming up, uh, of course. Uh, that means that uh, a lot of us are going to be getting one legendary. We're going to be getting, uh, what else? Some resources, titanium and that sort of thing. But someone had a really good idea here. X7th 
uh, says this appreciation package idea players choose one weapon and one armor from entire legendary pool it says upon signing and allowed for only one character per se account obviously the armor depends on what class you choose to log in with could be god rolled doesn't have to be doesn't seem like it would be too hard to implement and would be fair thoughts it's definitely an interesting idea considering that people have struggled with the game already uh, so i don't know perhaps uh it could be possible that they could do this we have a reply from maverick who says this in my opinion anything other than that is pointless giving an extra legendary role is going to give the majority of people nothing usable not much of a community appreciation so uh, yeah, people want to be able to choose a specific legendary that perhaps they have been seeking through the entire game. And it would be actually an interesting idea if they can actually implement that full show. All right, now it's time to get into your top comments. You better believe it. So remember, leave a comment down below. It could end up right here in the video. You never know. So this was my recent video title. It is as follows. Uh, it is, wow, I was not expecting this response from the dev team, new update. So we got like this very passionate response from the community manager at Square Enix for Outriders, of course. And he was talking basically about how much work he's put into, uh, you know, communication. And you could see it, like the passion is there. Let's take a look at what you guys had to say about this one. So we have this from Bolivia Salutar, who says, at times, it's like some people don't know what a day off is. Arcane takes two days off and suddenly he's horrible. Feel bad for the guy. Hope he's taking care of himself. Yeah, you know, you can get really burnt out with that community manager job uh, for sure. I've actually worked with community managers in the past, of course, as a YouTuber, and I see the stress firsthand of what they go through. You know, it used to be before the pandemic, I would travel and of course I would see the stress of what's going on. And they're kind of outside of, uh, uh, decisions made by the publisher and of course the developer they're really trying to communicate with the community that's their job i feel like uh in particular people can fly square enix they've done an excellent job this is just my opinion with uh outriders now david garcia says he's got a lot of good points if you're going to have a go at them no matter what they say where's the motivation for people can fly to communicate at all absolutely because uh, also you know the community manager was talking about how some things were paraphrased, taken from old articles, and kind of manipulated by some of the press and media, which uh, happens a lot. Now, John uh, goes on to say this right here. I agree that the exhibition shop should have rotating legendaries uh, for folks that have really bad luck can buy their wanted legendaries. People will have to farm expeditions for the supplies rather than getting frustrated with random and infrequent drops. Even Anthem started doing this because of the crappy drop rates. It's a great idea. It's one way they can quickly, I think, quickly adjust things instead of reworking the entire algorithm of drop rates. They could do that for, you know, the expansion. But for now, I think this is the quickest fix what John just uh, suggested right there. Back to the man says the following. He says, it just sounds like the community manager needs a vacation. He deserves it. Absolutely, man. Raging Wyvern says the following. He says, I really think in this day of age, early access with a trial period is the way to go. That's the thing, though. The, the other, you know, you got me thinking immediately. The other thing that they did right with Outriders was the demo. Like, you could even still access the demo to this day for free, and no one's doing it that at all. They're just doing beta. So, uh, you know, they did some really cool stuff with Outriders, and that's one of the reasons why I am following you know people can fly to this day and seeing what they are doing next i'm personally curious to see what they do with project gemini and project dagger and of course what they do with the expansion for outrider so again i'm going to keep you guys in the know as to what happens next uh with all things outriders and of course more open world gaming uh goodness in the future so stay tuned thank you so much for watching stay tuned for more and i will see you all next time take care